Hello and welcome everyone. I hope you've been having a great Saturday afternoon. My name is William and I'm a program coordinator here at Harmony Plus, specifically in the reading and writing department. So you may have seen my face before if you participate in our Moonshot Reading Club or if you're one of our reading and writing courses. Um, otherwise, it's nice to meet you. Uh, this is actually my first time acting as a host for one of our weekly webinars, although looking at our registrant list tonight, I noticed a few familiar faces, people who have attended quite a few of our webinars. And so to those people, I just want to say thank you from, to everyone from Harmony Plus. It really means a lot that you're continuing to be interested in our work and interested in the things we do. So tonight's webinar, as the title shows, is about the importance of extracurricular activities and internships. With application season in full swing, um, it's now more important for students from all grade levels to think about this really crucial aspect of school career as well as their personal development. And so I'm really excited tonight to be having this conversation with Mr. Nebby, who is our speaker and has a very rich background in this particular area. So in particular, we're gonna be touching on internships and volunteering. That's gonna be the core of our content. Um, and I hope everyone gets something out of tonight. Um, so before we dive right in, as always, I'm just gonna give you a really quick background on Harmony Plus. So we have very amazing uh, educational partnerships with some of the leading universities in the United States. We've got UC Berkeley, who we have a very trusting and really incredible relationship with, work with a lot of their faculty, found companies with them. Um, or rather organizations. Uh, we work with San Jose State University. We also work with SRI International, which is an amazing research institute founded by Stanford trustees in the 1940s. Um, and we provide top-notch programs to outstanding local and international students. And so this word hybrid learning, I'm sure has been such a buzzword across this entire year with coronavirus and everything. Um, and that's something that Harmony Plus has been adapting for a long time. We have educational programs as well as educational services. We do online and offline programs. We do synchronous and asynchronous programs that happen all together, programs that happen spaced out or separately. And we also put theory and practice together in our work. And so we do enforce guidance from top teachers, PhDs, experts in their field, business experts, Silicon Valley, um, gurus, those kinds of things. We have those endorsements, very incredible trusting relationships from those leading universities. And our goals are to uh, help students build competitive advantages in their applications, in their studies day to day, as well as just to enjoy continuous improvement uh, in their life, right? Upgrade education is our goal. Um, and so here are some of the universities, some of the places that students who have used our services or our classes have gone on to go to. You can see some of the universities I named previously, as well as plenty of other really amazing names in this bunch. Um, but I don't want to keep you too much on that. I do want us to continue. And so um, I'm very excited to introduce our speaker tonight, Mr. Nebby, and he uh, works on strategic partnerships here at Harmony Plus really a uh, crucial part of our work here. And he's, he's been an organizer in the past for several political campaigns, local, state, national on offices. He's done consulting work uh, for the Stanford Institute for Innovation and Developing Economies, otherwise known as the Stanford SEED. He's got a degree in business administration from the University of Phoenix, as well as a business education certificate from Stanford University. Uh, last thing I wanna say on this slide is, I'm, if you've been paying attention to the election this year, which I sure hope you have been, you probably recognize this woman standing to his left. That of course is Senator Kamala Harris, who is Joe Biden's running mate uh, for the Democratic Party this coming presidential election. So very amazing accomplished woman and someone who we're very excited to have somebody who is, who, you know, has worked with that person uh, through this organization work and political campaigning work. Um, and so last thing I'll do before I turn it over is um, discussing our agenda. So we're gonna kick off talking about the internship programs aspect of it. What is interning? How can it help you? What are the benefits? Where can you go? That kind of thing. And then uh, talking about the soft skills you learn as a result. We'll touch on resumes for a brief moment and then move on to volunteering. And as always, we're gonna wrap it up by talking about the ways that Harmony Plus can help. And so with that in mind, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Nebby. So Nebby, how are you doing tonight or this evening, this afternoon? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, William. Thank you for inviting me. I am pleased to be here talking about internship. As everybody, I started as an intern in Ethiopia and a coffee, which coffee came from Ethiopia, as you know. And yeah. I was dealing when I was 16 years old 
and a coffee market putting uh, numbers which coffee where it came from so that was a good experience for me as an intern doing that so give me a, a real life experience uh, connecting to people easy to you know sellers and buyers so it was a good beginning so i gained a skill that is very very useful in my life Amazing. Yeah. And I hope, I hope that, you know, this idea of the power of interning and then this early career work is a message we can really impart tonight. So why don't we move on? <clears throat> All right. So, so Nebby and I previously discussed these, um, these people who had started as an intern. So why don't we, why don't we talk about them? Let's who's this first one, Nebby? <laughs> I'm sure first we all recognize one is her. Oprah Winfrey, you know, where she started in Chicago, WLAC TV. Oprah Winfrey, Winfrey is uh, the greatest talk show, uh, daytime, if you all remember. Yeah, she is the top uh, woman in that circuit, and she's a billionaire now. <laughs> so that is in Chicago, WLSC TV. Nice. Oh, this guy, Anderson Cooper, uh, he started in, C in CIA as an intern. Now he's a world-class journalist at CNN. So you see him every every night, most of the time. Yeah. Conan O'Brien. He started in the congressman's office. Congressman Barney Frank, very intelligent congressman. Conan Conan O'Brien is a late night talk show. If you stay late, you find them most of the time. Great, great comedian. Oh, top guy. If you have an iPhone, you know this guy. Steve Jobs. You know where he started? HP. Not, not the Harmony Plus, but Hale Packard. <laughs> uh, greatest mind in Silicon Valley. You know, uh, Apple is his invention was... Uh, Steve Wozniak, Apple is the richest company in Silicon Valley, maybe in the world. It's a trillion dollar company. Yes, amazing, really high, incredible, uh, high performing company we all know. I think about two years ago, their GDP, or rather their, their total revenue passed the GDP of the state of Florida. Not only that, but you mentioned Steve Wozniak, his co-founder, and I believe that they actually met when they were both working at Hewlett Packard, which I think goes to show that interning, you can really make some very powerful yeah. connections and partnerships. All right, I won't, I won't talk your ear off. Why don't we keep going? So, an internship, what is an internship? An internship is a, a short uh, work experience where students or the teenage performs a professional work uh, to become to a level of exposure to a particular industry or organization's goal and objectives. An internship can be in, a, in a private companies and corporations and public or government entities. I remember placing some interns in San Jose city offices, uh, Congressman Mike Honda's offices. I used to get at least one uh, teenage every year to go and apply and get that internship. Really amazing. All right. And so um, obviously a lot of internships are paid, especially depending on if you're working somewhere in a private sector, that kind of thing. Some though are not. And I wanted to ask Nebby, what's sort of the difference between an unpaid inter internship and volunteering, which we'll talk about later tonight? Uh, totally. Volunteering can be most fulfilling, uh, most uh, desirable for your, you know, objectives, but maybe you're not getting paid for it. For example, you can volunteer for the Red Cross, you can volunteer for Amnesty International, you can volunteer for animal rights, you can volunteer for uh, causes that really you care. 
So there are a lot of organizations like that. And uh, uh, internship can be different. Internship can be paid or not paid, but 60% uh, are paid these days. 40% nice. are unpaid. The paid ones can be very uh, life-changing, uh, new entrance for the young person to learn about the world. Uh, and, and the unpaid ones can be fulfilling. It's like maybe you get an extra credit in some colleges and schools. You have an unpaid uh, internship and if you check the university or the college you're going, you can get a, an extra credit for it. Nice. Yeah, lots of values to interning outside of just the monetary value. Great. Um, so we'll move on in a second. I do want to uh, remind our audience that if you have, we will have a Q&A section near the end of the presentation tonight or this evening, this afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, but if you go down to your tab at the bottom, the little control bar for Zoom at the bottom, you'll see a Q&A panel where you'll have a, a window where you might be able to ask questions of your own. If you want to start thinking of questions and submitting them now, we will do our best to address them at the end, accommodating for time. But why don't we keep on going with the internships? So next up, Nebi, is this slide. Yeah, the <laughs> soft skills that you need in an internship and you gain an internship are the following. Time management, as a young person, yes, you have time management, you know, to wake up in the morning and go to school on time, but showing up to the right time and place the ability to meet uh, specific deadlines when you work with your coworkers and good time management and cooperation. That is very important. And I call it uh, one of the top soft skills that you learn, you gain, you, you may have it now, but you'll see how it works with you. Number two is Professional orientation. Uh, this means attire. I like to dress professional most of the time. As you see, even I live in Silicon Valley, I, my attire is always uh, very, uh, uh, very specific for the place. So professional orientation is very important. Attire, attitude, and demeanor. Uh, as very important for your career, for your profession in the future. So that is the stuff that you have to focus. The third one is teamwork. Having a teamwork spirit uh, that gives you a plus in leadership abilities, helping people uh, in the workplace, help, help being helpful and recognizing and valuing uh, the other contributions of people uh, in, with your team, that's called teamwork. The other one is verbal communication ability, being articulate and to the point, proactive about uh, the tasks and the responsibilities. The um, fifth one is problem solving competence. The ability for the intern to break down information in a smaller pieces and to use critical thinking on decision making skills. All right, great. And so uh, you touch on leadership um, in a few places, in particular in number three, right, in teamwork, having a teamwork spirit, including leadership abilities. I wanted to ask you for an intern, maybe in your experience, something you've done or something that you've seen an intern do, what are some examples of a way an intern can display leadership? Obviously, for a lot of companies and organizations, an intern is kind of very bottom rung, very low level. So how? So what are some ways that they can demonstrate leadership? Well, there's a lot of examples I can give you. I can give you some um, some of my own, or I can give you an, an, a, a one that I remember a few years ago here in San Jose. Mm -hmm. And the mayor's office, an intern took a leadership position in the office that he was assigned in the mayor's office and answered calls 
or the communities, and this is particularly the African-American community, he answered them. He was a go-between the mayor and uh, the African-American community to get their issues addressed. Nice. So in a way, this person was kind of demonstrating leadership by the way he communicated with the constituents of this leader, right? Correct. Correct. Nice. That's a good one. I wanted to uh, touch on the number one. I'll just, well, it looks like I can't go back to that slide right now. But um, the, the number one, the dress and attire, or rather, um, number two, rather, professional orientation. So does something like that, you mentioned the way you dress for so the Silicon Valley, would that maybe change depending on the environment that someone works in? If you're maybe doing back-end coding at some kind of tech company, does your dress look different than if you're interning as like... Um, no, I mean, I, no, no, I'm not particular about that, but uh, I'm, uh, with, uh, with what's happening right now with a remote uh, internship available, uh, uh, your demeanor, not specifically you, how you dress up, but you know, in a place like in the city offices or in the place I did my internship, I dressed up fine. I dressed up fine means I dressed up with a tie. Nice. Uh, but uh, right now things are moving and you know, the current situation. Uh, I hope you, you know, people adjust to the current situation and be attentive. But the, the demeanor, the ability to think uh, and show themselves professional is very important. Thanks. All right, very cool. So thank you for this uh, portion on soft skills. Uh, let's move on to the key learning points. Well, uh, uh, well, and the most important thing in, in during the internship is you learn a lot of things hands-on right there. You learn uh, how to work with people. You learn how to, how professional organizations are, how hierarchical organizations are, how you're, you know, because you are new, you are fresh, you are from high school. And most of the time, you don't have that kind of understanding of the world. Uh, so all these things, hands-on experience, working with different cultures, and with different, you know, uh, different teams and uh, hierarchicals, managers, supervisors, and working together with experts, you give you a big, a big learning curve. Nice. All right. These are really useful. I think in particular for young students as well as their parents, as they're looking at these key learning points, the one that they might have the most investment in or the most um, assigned the most weight to might be number three, this third bullet here, working together with experts in the respective field. Because, you know, having the experience is good, but having an expert who can, you know, substantiate what the student did, verify that they were there and, you know, provide that level of, of confirmation affirmation is is good so with that in mind is it common for interns especially at the high school level to ask these experts their superiors those kind of things to serve as letters of recommendation references that kind of thing although it's considered like a pre-work experience is that something that's still done there is a lot of places that they give it depends on your relationship and with the organization, it's the, and most of the organizations give you that letter of recommendation. Uh, I had, when I was young, I had uh, three or four letters uh, from different supervisors that I entered. So uh, most of them said that I was gonna rule the world. So <laughs> the good recommendation is very important. Nice, yeah, I'm sure for, for these students, that's definitely a, a valuable thing. And speaking of valuable things, why don't we talk about a few more of the, the benefits for interns? Job and workplace experience. So you're, again, you're learning about jobs. You're learning about uh, workplaces, how things are moving in the world because you're really fresh. Uh, uh, you understand organizations, you understand companies. Mm -hmm. Now that you are in it and you're learning every day, good experience. Building your resume is very important. 
because you don't have any working experience uh, in your resume when you're going to finishing high school, going to college. So that does give you an exposure to uh, a new environment which give you an experience, building network. And the network is very important. Uh, I heard uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, they met when they were uh, young uh, teenagers working in HP as an intern. So those guys developed the first company, uh, created Mac, Apple, you know, Apple is the greatest company in the world. So it's, that's where you meet your friends, uh, that you can pursue your dreams. Uh, <clears throat> you, having an intern, working as an intern, you can start, your starting salary, you know, in California, yes, the minimum wage is where a lot of people start work. But uh, if you have an experience in, very uh, known company as an intern, your salary can be a little bit higher than that. Uh, fast in, your, in the hiring process, because your internship experience with the support letter and recommendation will give you an age from the, your competitors. Uh, you can do other things uh, uh, because You've already done an internship. You already know the companies in the business world or the organization that you work with. You can ask for a, a better uh, potential new career. All right, very interesting. So I have just a few follow-up questions here. Um, so when you say faster hiring process here, when you have that internship experience, are you, do you mean like when somebody is applying to for full time for the same company that they worked at? Or does this just mean like very easily put their resume at the top of the pile even when applying to? Um, uh, both can, can apply because if you put your internship experience in your resume, that means you have an experience in the work environment. So that give you an age from a, a person or a uh, a person who's competing to that position who has no experience. Yeah, okay, nice. And I also wanted to uh, touch on this number fourth bullet here, potential for increased starting salary. I'm sure that, you know, this might be not, not quite be something that our middle or maybe early high school students are thinking about, but it is definitely something that's useful in the long run. You might know, I think that's the, the minimum wage in California is $12 an hour, which, you know, for living in an area such as Silicon Valley is simply not enough, right? And so I think this is something that students want to be thinking about quite a bit. And so I was wondering for students, you hear a lot about these stories about um, interns getting offered full-time positions after a long time working there. Is that something that typically only happens for like the college level ones after they've also gotten their degree or do, is this known to happen at the uh, high school it, level? It can happen in both places, but most of the time it happens for the interns that works in the company, they may get called and get hired because they've seen them, how they work. They know how, they're not new for that environment. They're not new about that, that organizations. And mm -hmm. they, they see how they work. They've shown uh, great energy and great uh, enthusiasm uh, about the place. Uh, and they, get, they get called back and hired. Amazing. Yeah, I think that's what a lot of people dream of. So um, we have a few more benefits here. Yeah, you gain a real world problems uh, solving how the world is solving a lot of problems right there in the offices, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you can cultivate adaptability in, in the dynamic world. You're, you are adapting. You are increasing market ability to employers. On average, 20% of graduate seniors have a job offers before graduation. That's huge. The percentage increase all the way to 58%, some of the places. So having an uh, working as an intern 
as I said, give you an age, uh, an advantage from others who never had any, any experience in working environment. Nice. And especially this statistic is kind of harrowing, right? On average, only 20% of graduating seniors. And then if they do have the internship, it, grad it almost triples, right, to 58%. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah. that's really should, should speak to the value of the internship, for sure. Okay. So with that in mind, um, I know it's something that you and I have been discussing is that when it comes to applying for the internship, the process in general gets treated like it's a job, right? That's one thing that separates uh, interning from volunteering is that usually volunteering is like, you maybe fill out a registration form similar to the ones people fill out to participate in tonight's webinar, and then you show up, right? There's no real interview process to be a volunteer. And so one thing that uh, I know you and I have been talking about, Nebi, is about um, cultivating a good resume. And this is something that some students don't really think about early into their high school career because a lot of times there's no need for it and maybe they feel that they don't have enough uh, experience outside of school to pad it out but uh, I thought that you know this might be a good time for us to give a teeny a few pointers a few hints about um, how you can make that kind of good resume. So re re resume is, uh, is very important even you don't have a job you never had an, any uh, job in your life until now Mm -hmm. coming up with a resume is very important when you're coming up with the uh, resume as a young person you have to pay attention to your grammar and spellings very important when i say stay relevant uh, that you your objectives have to look really really crisp uh, and wants to show that you're ready to go to work Put the objectives that what you want to accomplish. Although you don't have experience, in, uh, but your awards in high school, scholarship, honors, extracurricular activities, especially in any leadership positions in the school, even at home when you were cooking, how you cooked, how you know about uh, to bake that bread, the, the, the stuff that you do at home, that shows leadership. Uh, you, you have to show how you're involved in your family's affair. The leading, you know, you, that shows leadership. Most of this young people uh, are not sitting and watching basketball. You're doing something in your house. Uh, and it shows leadership. So you can put that in a crisp way, in a good worded way. Uh, the most important thing is in your resume, put your email, put your phone number and your city that you are. Don't put your address most of the time. Uh, I think uh, it is not really important you put the full address because we have this current days, uh, the importance is where you live uh, uh, and the companies who are looking for an entrance can communicate with you if they know what city you're living in. Okay, great. And so I had a few follow-up questions for here. And so uh, you mentioned, right, that you should include that GPA if it's over the 3.0. Obviously, you have some situations where a student might not be meeting this benchmark, right? And so you maybe it's okay to disinclude it in a resume, but if they, for example, get invited to interview for the position and they get asked about the, the GPA, um, what should they do? What if they're asked about this? How can they, they sort they of just have to be? Uh, most people do not. Most companies do not ask you for your your GPA on an interview. Uh, if they ask you for a GPA, uh, you should be frank about it, talk to them and tell them that you, you're improving it, you're very focused. If you're less than 3.0, you are taking extra effort to make sure your GPA is improved. But at the same time, do not dwell on it, do not dwell on GPA. Show them that you have a lot of other skills, other activities, other extra curricular activities that you're doing. Uh, and uh, uh, show them that you have uh, something real 
to bring to the table. Nice. All right. Great. And so for these younger students, especially these high school students, they have pretty limited job experience. They might have no job experience, those kinds of uh, fields. You know, are there any specific keywords or phrases that that maybe work best when they're applying for internships? Yeah, there's a lot of uh, words that they can apply and apply that just there. Uh, totally ready to take a leadership position, especially uh, in, 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 in a different areas, in a different, different uh, uh, areas and different companies and different subjects. Uh, that is a very important word that they can put there. Uh, awesome. Okay, great. Um, so with that in mind, I thought maybe we would move on to part two of uh, what we plan to cover after internships. There's also volunteering, another thing that many school applications look towards. So, so we in. Mm -hmm. volunteering uh, can be the most fulfilling experience that you can do in your own time. Uh, most of the volunteers that you face do a lot of human rights, civil rights, animal rights issues. They want to talk to you. They want, you know, they stop at the grocery chain at Whole Foods and they will walk in and they say, sir, we want to talk to you. We are from animal rights activists. We want you to sign this petition to go into the state. Those are active volunteers. But at the same time, there are interns they get paid by get collecting uh, uh, signatures. But volunteers is the most fulfilling, when I say the most fulfilling experience that somebody, especially at a young age, can do. Uh, there is no barriers to do volunteers. Volunteers can be any age, uh, but at the same time, you can build your skills, you can know new friends, you can open your eyes to the new world, the whole new world. Um, <clears throat> volunteers can be in different organizations. Do you? Uh, we have a list of organizations, right? We do, I can jump right to that if you'd like, yeah. Red Cross, Amnesty International, uh, churches, synagogue, mosques, religious organizations, county and state parks, hospitals. Uh, a lot of hospitals in the Bay Area. Uh, they used to have a lot of volunteer teenagers coming to Stanford, UCSF, do a lot of stuff. Homeless shelters, after school tutoring. You can tutor, uh, you know, a lot of uh, kids, uh, junior, uh, high school, uh, Habitat for Humanity. And you know what Habitat for Humanity is, an organization that built houses, uh, founded by President Carter. It's a big organization. YMCA, WCA, that's a huge organization. Uh, Young men, Christian, uh, and young women, Christian associations, those are the organizations. Uh, you can volunteer, civic organization like Rotary Club, Lion Club, uh, you can volunteer for those organizations. The Rotary Club is where uh, you can and go and participate in civic activity, meaning uh, different speeches by different uh, historians, politicians come and speak, Lion Club the same way, Lion Club does a lot of Cheshire works, uh, a lot of uh, uh, good work to help uh, a lot of people all over the world. So there's a lot of organizations that you can volunteer. Nice. 
I wanted to ask, um, so obviously some of these are specifically charities or nonprofits. We've all heard of places like Amnesty International. We've all heard of the YMCA, the YWCA. For things like religious organizations, churches, synagogues, mosques, obviously one of the big incentives that students have for volunteering is being able to log hours and display the hours that they have. Do you know, do, do, do things that aren't explicitly charities or nonprofits, such as like religious organizations or some of these other things, do they have ways of tracking hours for those volunteers? No, it depends on the organizations. There are some churches who can do that. There are some synagogues, I don't know about mosques, uh, they can do that, but they can do that. Some of the mosques in San Jose, I think on West Side, I think I remember that. So uh, churches and synagogues uh, and some mosques will do that. Nice. Okay, very interesting. So um, I had, uh, as but I was looking- Before, before I, uh, I, we missed, uh, we missed the other organizations uh, that can, oh. can help as, mm -hmm. as, as voluntarmatch.org. That is an organization that can match the volunteers. Uh, there is idealist.org, idea, list.org mm. uh, of course we put red cross those organizations you can access them online yeah that's great and the other nice thing about some of these is um you know the organization amnesty international can have a lot of um opportunities um <clears throat> but also i believe organizations like amnesty international they also can you can start a. a organizations within your school. I, I know a lot of schools run Amnesty International as an extracurricular opportunity. Um, so besides that, um, I know that as I was looking at the questions that registrants had before they started this um, webinar, before they got in, one person was asking about how, how can you uh, assess how relevant an opportunity, a volunteer opportunity or otherwise might be um, for you. The, um, and so I thought maybe this little graphic might do a good job of explaining sort of relevance of a volunteer opportunity. And I think you can apply this model to internships as well. So um, did you want to maybe explain this a little, Nevi? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> most effective organizations, uh, you can participate on weekly or daily basis. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll tell you there's an organization that wants you to come every day and help them. Those are the most effective organizations like the Red Cross. Uh, they want you to participate. Animal rights organization, they want you to participate. YMCA, YWCA, they want you to come directly talk to them. Uh, the other organization is Amnesty International. They, you're involved. You're involved if you become an Amnesty International volunteer. You're writing letters. And for an Asian country that is going through a lot of turmoil in human rights, or an African country, or an European country, depends on the news, it depends on the political situation. Um, uh, but it, it helps you to form a, a mature uh, attitude about the world. When you're doing this stuff, you're, you're developing. You're developing politically if you're politically inclined. You, if you are, uh, but a computer science and engineering or in medicine, volunteering in you can get some volunteer jobs, but at the same time, most of those organizations want you to become an intern. So because there's some activities that requires work, uh, a specific task, so they want you to get involved with them. But social civic organization wants you, wants you to become a volunteer because they don't have a lot of money to cover uh, uh, expenses uh, and those, and those specific uh, tasks. Okay. okay, 
Um, so like in, as in the, shown in this chart, um, the, um, the, some of the things that we notice, first of all, um, it seems like it's when you're doing a volunteer opportunity, it's more effective when it comes to frequency to do something that has a high frequency, right? If you do something one time, you, you do a blood drive once, you run a marathon once, that's great, but it's definitely, it doesn't really show the commitment to service or the commitment to bettering the world that I think a lot of colleges really look for, right? And so um, what do you think, how, how do you think it's possible for someone who already has a very full workload and course load to be able to fit volunteering and, and doing these kinds of activities into their weekly schedule? Is that something that can be done? That can be done. I'll just give you an example of Amnesty International. Amnesty International, yeah you don't have to go to their offices you become a remotely an, a, a volunteer activist so you are writing letters you are helping them organize uh, so you, you are involved in their activities and you're learning every day from your home nice very good okay Pretty interesting. So I see um, we have somebody who is asking about um, typing in the organizations that have been listed. Uh, I have some of those here. I'll mention that after school tutoring as well. Um, vo vo Volunteermatch.org. Mm -hmm. Let's just get that one. Um, that is a huge organization that can Red Cross. So I've left a few into uh, the chat box now. I want to keep things moving. So um, this recording will be viewable after uh, it has ended. And so if you want to go back and find these, uh, we can, we can, you can find those in the recording as well as you can uh, contact us afterwards. And I think I would be fine to uh, share the slides. Um, so we're almost near the end. Um, and so I wanted to just hit the one final thing when it comes to volunteering, which is about discussing volunteer experience. I think sometimes volunteering may be this like thing that's a little more nebulous and internships in the sense of that the responsibilities are more general. And so when it comes time to discuss volunteer experience, be it on, a, on an essay, in person, in an interview, in any situation, these are, what are some of the things that people should think about? What are some of those questions? I think we can see them here on this slide. So we can start with this first one, right? How did you discover the opportunity and why did you choose it? So what's some, what, how, what should people be considering as they say that? Yeah, well, uh, they can say, I, I'm very much interested in the issue of human rights. I'm interested in the issue of uh, animal rights. I'm interested in uh, helping the state or the, the, the county on, on the parks uh, because I come here and I want to volunteer for parks in Los Gatos or in Los Altos or you know cities that has parks because they need volunteers. Parks needs volunteers all the time. Yeah. Uh, all right. Very interesting. So, so the we... second mm -hmm. question is: What did you expect from yourself in the opportunity? Yeah, you're 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 expecting to learn you're expecting to work with people you're expecting to understand uh the issues those are the things that can answer that question nice and so um i think that one thing we see when we're looking at these questions is that it kind of speaks to the thing we were saying before about frequency right i think the more that you do volunteering and the more heavily you're involved in them your ability to answer these questions it becomes stronger right what did why what did you expect from yourself and the opportunity well if i just went to the soup kitchen one weekend with my friends to help out i mean that's one level of expectation if i went there regularly and started to become a shift supervisor that's a different expectation so I think that's another another thing to think about. And so um, I think, um, you know, I, how do students, when it comes to these, students should speak to their genuine experience, right? They should speak to how they actually felt about it positively or negatively. Do you think that's true, Nebi? Yeah, it, most students write essays about them. And that's where they form, formulated uh, and most uh, achieved uh, leaders in this country and the political world, they said, 
my experience in volunteering in soup kitchen might want me to make sure that I end homelessness. This senator who said that. I remember that because really, really it touched him. At a young age, you are really, really, really want to change the world. If you want to change the world, uh, that's where the places that you get, uh, you get uh, influenced. And you get influenced and make uh, a commitment to do something about it. Nice. Influence and commitment to make something about it. That's really useful information for us. Okay, so we've reached about uh, the three-quarter mark in our uh, presentation so, tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, talking about uh, internship, uh, I think we, can I talk about internship? Uh, yeah, please. Vo volunteer, because in high school internships uh, and science, because we talked about uh, uh, volunteers volunteering into different political human rights organization but at the same time we live in Silicon Valley uh, internship can be huge here that's why in UCSF uh, there is a high school program the UCSF is a the finest uh, hospital in San Francisco Bay Area Stanford Rice is another Stanford uh, has another at you know uh, intern program for uh, teenagers uh, <clears throat> berkeley nano lab is another one that really wants to see internship from young uh, teenagers to uh, high school uh, uh, students to apply so there's a lot chavo space lab Another one in Alameda. That's the Chabot Space Lab. They want some interns uh, from from uh, high school. Uh, Google Computer Science Summer Institute. That's another one uh, I know about. Facebook has the same program. Facebook Summer Academy. Are, I want to mention those organizations that are very, very important. All right, great. And we'll try to get sort of a written list of that uh, as well, in addition to the volunteer opportunities that we had to. I think that's really useful for everybody. Um, so, like I said, we're about, looks like we're about 48 minutes in. And so I wanted to switch gears a little bit and uh, sort of do my hosty responsibilities to talk about uh, how Harmony Plus can help with your college applications, as well as talk about um, a very relevant, uh, exciting avenue opportunity that we have coming up uh, for our constituents, our stakeholders. And so, as always, Harmony Plus does have a lot of help that we can give, some consulting and help and that kind of thing that we can do for college applications. We can strategize the applications. We can do enhancement insight into extracurriculars. We do a lot of essay editing work and we also uh, help a lot with vetting and crafting an ideal school list, incorporating both those reach schools that students really want, the safeties and sort of those low risk schools um, and figuring out you know, where a student's happy medium is when it comes to those. Um, and a lot of that falls under the umbrella of our future planning work. And so, like I said, that's our college counseling, some high school application, summer pr planning, um, test prep, four-year planning, all of that. And so we do adopt this mentality of moonshot in education when we, when we do this. And that's the idea. If you're in reading club with me, you already know that that means, you know, you shoot for the moon. Even if you miss, you land among the stars, right? And so that helps our students to aim high. We try to uh, foster these learning ecosystems where they have access to a lot of higher ed resources and provide these highly customized services. And then we also you know, work with a really amazing Golden Triangle team where we have these US coaches that students work with um, that fall and work with educators in addition to our education consultants as well as peer mentors who help the students at that real ground level, that real interpersonal level. And we also have this very transparent service system. You always know exactly what's going on with Harmony Plus internally. 
um, and we put you into what's called our Kanban system that is a very convenient way for you to track your students progress make sure the student is doing their job make sure we're doing our job all of that and we do have this um, this smile motto S M I L E and the L of that stands for love right we treat students as if they are our own children that's a mentality that we really try to bring both for our future planning students as well as the students that take our courses all the all the people that we seek to upgrade the education of um, and so with that in mind, I think it's very fitting that now we uh, introduce a new opportunity that we are bringing to Harmony Plus very soon, which is our Curricular Activity and Internship Club, or EAIC. Um, and so this was created with the purpose of providing really valuable, enriching extracurricular experiences to students and giving them some access to really exclusive internships and extracurricular activities. Uh, Harmony Plus is very blessed to have a lot of amazing connections that I mentioned uh, earlier at the start of this presentation, as well as some more in addition to those. And we work with a lot of renowned nonprofits, companies, educational institutions. And so it's time for us to, you know, be able to use those resources and help those motivated students who are willing to go the extra mile and uh, participate there. And so they can also use this as a way to connect with these other high achieving students. You can join um, bi-weekly workshops, webinars, and discussion sessions, and I'll get into that pretty quickly. And so we are trying to do some different levels of membership for it. You can be a gold member, silver member, or bronze member. And students can become members of groups that correspond with their grades, right? We try to partition out the college group, the high schools, and the middle school groups. Obviously, opportunities are going to look different for these different age groups, pretty drastically different. And so it makes sense to partition it by where, what, what level of education your student is currently at. And so um, some other benefits that we have at all levels, and so this encompasses everything for bronze, and we'll talk more about uh, silver and gold in a second, but we will start an all-member only EAIC group on Slack. You can learn about the internship opportunities we have there, um, advice on applying for outside jobs and internships, information related to those activities and internships, and so you can receive access to apply for exclusive Harmony Plus opportunities, things that cannot be found on Indeed or uh, Zip Recruiter, one of those places where you might be hunting for internships. And you can participate in any volunteer activity sponsored by Harmony Plus, right? And so you also have the opportunity to join any workshops, webinars, and discussion sessions that we work on that are sponsored by EASC at one of these discounted rates, right? This is something that we'll, we open to the public as well, but they have to pay um, an extra cost. And so EASC gets a discount on that. Um, and so you can also become a part of additional chat groups on Slack that are related to specific majors, intended majors if you're a high school or middle school student, right? And you can connect with other outstanding students within the Silicon Valley region and beyond with EAIC, right? And they can be potential project collaborators for each other. That same Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak mentality, right? Meet someone who shares your same motivations, your same interests, right? And so one thing Harmony Plus uh, will continue to do that's a really amazing ability we have is record these students' volunteer hours and be able to award the President's Volunteer Service Award to students who accumulate enough hours to satisfy the criteria of that award. And of course, you also have the opportunity to gain a leadership role in the club that can be added to the student's resume, right? As you get into the high school age, you were looking for as many leadership opportunities as possible. And EIAC gives you those leadership opportunities, but it itself can also be an opportunity for leadership for those students. Um, one thing I want to add as well is that these opportunities and connections that we have, although concentrated in the Silicon Valley, we do have more beyond that. And these opportunities are open to people from all across the country. I mean, this is a mentality that Harmony Plus has constantly given. I myself actually live in, in the Boston area and I'm still able to regularly contribute to um, this company in a great way. And we try to strive to bring that same mentality to EAIC. And with you know, COVID-19 and remote learning and remote work, uh, I think that becomes more and more of a possibility. So don't think that these opportunities are only for those who live in California and specifically in Bay Area, Silicon Valley area. Um, and so to continue on, in addition to receiving information in the group chat, students also have the opportunity to attend events. You, we have workshops, webinars, and we plan to run these at a frequency of once every two weeks. And so with these webinars, generally what we're working on is personal development and professional development. Things like resume writing, cover letter writing, networking, using LinkedIn, project development, that kind of thing. 
And so we, you know, if you got, we gave you just a little taste of that tonight with um, the, the resume tips that we had, but obviously these fuller versions of the workshops contain a lot more in the way of formatting, what keywords to use, what things are appealing to search engines, that kind of thing. And so um, in addition to that, we also give advice on how to find internships and more. And so some of the things, if you up your uh, uh, membership level, we, we rise to silver level. So in addition to all the other benefits mentioned, these silver level member benefits include one-on-one -on -one training sessions, one each for things like interview practice, resume creation, internship search and application support, as well as one exclusively cultivated internship. We work one-on-one -on -one with the students, gauge their achievements so far, including personal experience, academic experience, any work experience they may have accrued, and create an internship opportunity with one of our connections that matches them uh, where they're at. And so uh, those member, those uh, advantages pass on to the gold level membership, but these members also enjoy exclusive networking and one-on-one -on -one mentorship meetings with industry leaders is another amazing power uh, that Harmony Plus has for itself. Um, and so as we continue to formulate EAIC and put it together, uh, one of the things that obviously any company wants to do in a new endeavor is gauge interest, right? Another skill that we strive to teach. Uh, to our students as well. Um, and so when it comes to joining EAIC, we want to be sure that it's a very competitive process. And so we ask that students uh, submit the following when they, when they fill out applications. So for this, we ask for a CV. And remember, that's pretty similar to their resume. And if you feel that you don't have enough information for that, you can also just include a list of activities, things you participate in. We want to know what skills you're proficient in. And we also ask that students write an essay explaining the reasons for wanting to participate in EAIC and potential contributions to their future internship organization. And so these select students will be asked to participate in interviews prior to receiving membership invitations, right? It's very important to us to be able to gauge where these potential uh, students we work with are at, and that will help the students just as much as it helps us. And so um, as we continue to pad out the, our, how this project will be carried out, there's a lot of details that, we, that, are, that we're still working on. We're still gauging membership price. Uh, gauging uh, student interest, that whole field. And so as we continue to do that market research, we do ask that those people participating tonight who are interested um, fill out this EAIC interest form, which is as a Google Doc. Actually, if you go into the chat for this group, not Q&A, but there's a chat for some people that might appear under more in your bar at the bottom, uh, you'll see that my assistant, our tech lead, Aaron, has uh, posted a link to this same Google Doc. So don't worry about trying to handwrite this massive URL. You can find it in the, um, in the chat as well, and we will send it out to all participants who are interested. Right? This is a total opt-in thing uh, to receive updates on EAIC and um, its application process. So we want to uh, make you aware of that now. Um, so I see that we are, wow, just nearly hitting 9 o'clock. Uh, well, 9 o'clock for me, um, but then 6 o'clock for you all. Uh, once again, the time difference. And so uh, I do want to uh, broach on next week's topic. Uh, Miss Calla will be our speaker again. She has been our um, quite a familiar face in our webinars, I'd say. And she's going to be talking to you all about how to craft perfect college essays. She's one of our amazing senior consultants. She's got a lot of incredible academic experience, experience working with students. Uh, she's really fantastic. And so she um, will be talking to you guys about essay writing, which is always a fun topic and one that is more and more relevant as application deadlines are looming, especially for those UC schools. Um, and so um, also we will include our contact information at the end here too. Um, and then now it's time for us to turn over for Q&A. And so um, I see a few Q&A questions here already. I want to say that this is uh, questions about AAIC, that extracurricular club that I just introduced. Questions for Nebby, who gave us a really fantastic uh, talk just now. Um, and so I, I believe we have a few already. Oops. Um, and so it looks like Bill has answered one, which is someone asked, where could I find the previous webinar recordings? And the best way is to go to um, search Harmony Plus on any of these places that he's listed, LinkedIn, Facebook, or YouTube. Be sure to also give us a like and subscribe while you're at it. We do want to really uh, uh, expand our realm. We do really appreciate that. 
And um, then we had another person who asked, can high schoolers earn internship opportunities? If so, how can they start looking? I mean, Nebby uh, addressed that earlier. Um, so do we have any other questions while we're at it? And so tell you what, Nebby, I will, um, as we wait for these ones, I will turn it over to um, some of the things that were uh, listed um, in our pre-registrations and questions that people asked during this one. And so one person asked, is there an age limit to start an internship? I think this is a good question because it broaches the point of like, you know, legal working age and does internship count as working? So, so do you know this one? Is there an age limit to start? So 16 and older. 16 and older. 16 and older in California. Nice. But in, in, in each state, it might be different. Somewhere in the South can be different, but in California, 16 and older. Yes, this is this is a question definitely that um, a quick a quick Google for your respective state. Most of the people attending this webinar tonight are in California, but I know we have some New Jersey's. We've got some other people, so be sure to check with your individual state's labor laws about that. Um, and so one person, I think we touched on this very very briefly, but one person asked how to found a nonprofit organization. Some very motivated students do this. Uh, so we we have that organization. Uh, we put in. You know, volunteermarch.org. Okay. So that is a huge organization that can match a volunteer interest, the volunteer's interest. Right. I think this question though is asking how to found a nonprofit, like how to start one yourself. Do you, do you know, like for filing for like the 501 and all of that? Is that 501 C? Yeah. yeah, you have to go through a state and federal level. So you have to have a board, you have to have a corporation, a corporation, a non-profit corporation. In the mm -hmm. state of California, I think you, you have to pay $800 to file that. Then you can apply for the non-profit status on the state level and federal level, two levels. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, 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 I think some, we see that in some very, very motivated students that they do start their very small nonprofits when they're in high school. Um, and so uh, there is one person who asked, I think, a very interesting and appropriate question, which is, um, oh, and I just missed it. Um, so this person was asking about, um, will there be different activities recommended for kids with high functioning levels of spectrum disorders, such as autism, Tourette's, those kinds of things? Are there still opportunities for that group? Their social, obviously soft skills rely heavily on social interactions. So are there still avenues by which those people can participate? Yeah, there are organizations that helps that. It was especially was an uh, an nonprofit status. I don't have the list, but uh, they can research and find a lot of organizations in that aspect. Actually, now. awesome. Okay, and one final one that I'll pull from this list here is just: um, Can you speak at all to the way that extracurricular opportunities, volunteer opportunities, internships have shifted in the wake of COVID? Obviously, when we think of volunteering, we think of a lot of in-person groundwork, right? How has that changed with COVID? So that this becomes like a remote volunteerism, like usually remote volunteerism is still there. It was there before, you know, writing letters. Uh, answering phones from your own phone, you know, forward the organization phone to you, or answering emails, uh, talking to uh, different organization, different people from your own phone. So you can you can do this stuff from your house, your home. Uh, volunteerism or internship, you can do it. Uh, after this COVID-19, uh, you can do it from home. Excellent. So okay. the, most important, um, the most important thing is to connect to those organizations and start doing it. All right, very cool. And so um, the other thing, so if we have any um, other final questions from people, um, our, our participant attendees, you can type into the Q&A box. The other thing you could do is raise your hand. You might see that little raise hand feature at the bottom of your menu. And if so, I can unmute you. Um, in fact, why don't I do that now for... Um... Hi, Phyllis, are you there? I think she had been asking earlier about that list of uh, in volunteer opportunities. I'm not sure if she's still here. 
Yes, I'm still here. All right, so Phyllis, you had your hand raised. Do you have any other questions for this presentation? No, I'm sorry, I, 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 I pressed uh, the button wrong. <laughs> no problem, okay. Yeah, I, I think great. you have answered my question mostly. Okay, great, mostly. Okay, Is, if there's anything else you, 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 you have for us? Oh. Uh, so far, so good. <laughs> okay, sure, sounds good. Okay, well, thank you. And I see that Hong Yan has raised their hand, so uh, I'm hitting the allow to talk. So Hong Yan, why don't you go ahead for us? So is there any opportunity for graders like that you guys may have? Opportunities for ninth graders that we may have. Um, yeah, yes. volunteer. Volunteer opportunities for ninth graders that we work with. So that would be something um, that obviously EAIC uh, gets gets poured into. Uh, we ourselves work with a few nonprofits such as like Get Involved Foundation um, that we can also refer you to. Um, and then um, for the ninth grade, that is one group that we work with. We parcel the students out to uh, middle school level, high school level, and college level. Um, and so, yes, definitely ninth grade would fall into that group. That's sort of our specialty. Can you like uh, be more specific and maybe like if you have the chance, like type it into the chat so like I can refer back to it? Um, that's okay. sure. Yeah, sure. Um, whoops. So, Nebby, can you speak at all to any volunteer opportunities that we've uh, given students in the past? Volunteer opportunities. There's a, a lot of volunteer opportunities uh, that we can we want to help, but uh, I don't remember any volunteer opportunities on the top of my head right now. But I've seen uh, students going and helping uh, and collecting petitions when I was in different organization. Okay, and so um, to speak a little more specifically, I'll say um, uh, I would ask that you fill out that EAIC interest form um, that I put there at the end, and you can see the link from Aaron Chen as well. That's a good way to stay updated about um, potential uh, avenues to potential uh, volunteer opportunities that we have. So May Lee, I believe she's asking, is starting a nonprofit organization a kind of volunteering? That's a good question. What, what would you say, Nebby? Is starting a nonprofit organization considered falling under that category of volunteer? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And uh, what, what do you, if you have the ability to start that organization and the interest, I think you can, volunteer, you can get a lot of volunteers, especially from the young uh, people that are attending, uh, participating today, because in our uh, in our FEC classes, there's a lot of organization that started nonprofit and profit organizations from young high school students. Yeah, for sure. So that 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 I agree, mainly would fall under the the volunteer portion of it because you know it's not it wouldn't it wouldn't really be an internship because an internship is something that you know is given to you by another company. Self starting would be you know considered a volunteer effort as you put into it. Um, and Nebby did also touch on um, our FEC, which is um, if you are interested in nonprofit creation or even um, some other even outside of the nonprofit realm, that's called our Future Entrepreneur Challenge. I wish I could drop a plug, like a visual plug for it here, but that's another amazing program that we run where students who are interested in entrepreneurship, which includes self-starting nonprofits, uh, can use that as sort of a fast track, almost like you can almost treat it like an incubation process uh, for what it takes to put together an initiative such as a nonprofit and do a presentation. And this is um, a one of our courses. And so I think you could, you could go to harmonyplus.com some of the info that you see here and look for FEC, Future Entrepreneur Challenge, if you have somebody who's interested. All right. And so do we have, I, th I know we're a little over the hour here. Do we have any final questions from people? I'll wait maybe just a, a few more moments. Okay, I think maybe that's just about it for everybody. So I wanna say thank you so much to people who have um, attended tonight. Like I said before, we saw a lot of familiar faces. It really means a lot to us that you continue to show up. 
um, and continue to support the endeavors of this organization. And so uh, I hope everybody has a great rest of their evening. Um, and we hope to see you soon. Uh, any final comments from you, Nebi? Thank you very much, uh, William. Thank you, Harmony Plus. And uh, this is a very interesting subject and I'm very happy to be here. Uh, internship was where most people start. I started as an intern uh, and in Africa in a coffee marketplace where all this coffee comes to Starbucks pizza that you see. And I was raising my hand when I was 16 years old saying that this was coffee from this part of the region. So internship is most people start. Internship is where you have uh, life-changing experience that come in and change you and mold you uh, to where you want to go in your life. Yeah, excellent. I hope, I hope that anecdote can be a, a message for everybody about the power of an internship. So once again, oh, sorry, I, I spoke too soon. One final question. How to write about volunteering or internships in a college application essay? Um, I think we're, we're low on time and I would say to this person, um, let me go back to the slide that has it, but I would say to this person, uh, please fill out this Google form that was on our uh, chat. It's in our chat window as well as here and we can provide you with um, some avenues to the services by which we can help uh, to write about volunteering or internships in a college essay. Um, and so, once again, we'll, we'll be following up with this link uh, to all attendees and then those who choose to opt in will get more updates on EAIC. Um, but we're going to leave it at that. So um, goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much, William.